Hey friends, it's Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper, and today I am coming back in time for back to school. So if you are going back to school or know people who are, this is a video for you. I have been searching high and low my life for tips and tricks as to how to make planning systems work for me. So I'm excited to share some ideas as to how you can make your planner work for you. This is in partnership with Indiana University. Some friends there wanted me to talk about some ideas for their students to use their planner that they get from their school. And so I hope you can take some of these ideas and translate it into your own planner, whether you get it from school or you've bought one from Target. I work in higher education. If you didn't know, I work for the University of Minnesota. And so I'm passionate about helping people figure out how to um, make the most out of their time in university and also write their own story as they discover who it is that they are while they go through their college experience. Um, I am a first generation college student, so neither of my parents went to university. And so I really had to figure out a lot of things. And I'm also here to tell you that um, there's a lot of resources for you and just share that even though you're given this structure you're given a lot of checklists when you start school. It's really up to you and your own adventure as to how you want to make that unfold for you. I want you to first think about why. I think a lot of times people tell you that if you need to be organized, you need to get your stuff together. And a lot of times we're wondering like, okay, that sounds nice. No one's going to argue with that, right? But how do we do that? I always ask people to think about why they need to be organized. Because if you don't believe in the why, you're not gonna do it. When you think about being organized, what does that get you? For me, when I think about the why of being organized, I like to know what's going on so that I can be really flexible. If I know what it is that I need to do or all my commitments in my time, if something comes up that's really important to me, I'm able to rearrange some of the things going on in my schedule to make that possible and make that happen in my time. Think about why it is that you want to be organized so that you can at least connect to that. And then the next thing that's so different for each of us is what we are being organized about. What are the things that you're trying to keep track of? This I cannot tell you. I want you to make your own list about what are the things that are important to you to keep track of and, and be thoughtful about. Whether that is keeping track of all the different clubs that you might be involved in or the, your work schedule or how you are volunteering, being creative, uh, though obviously homework if you're in school. What are the things that matter to you? Whatever this blank is, what is it that you are trying to keep track of? Knowing that allows you to figure out how you're going to do it. And I'll give you some examples of creative ways to do that that works for you. The one downside when people give you a planner is that it's a predetermined structure. It's they think this is what you need to be successful. And sometimes that's true and sometimes that's not. And that's usually the reason why I don't continue using planners is that they don't quite fit with the way that I want to do things. So that's why I'm giving you a lot of different suggestions to make the most out of this structure that you have been given. I'll first start off with the fact that they have a ton of resources right up in the front. And I think this is true of most college planners that they try to, to fit in all their different services and things up in the front. And whether or not you use this, know that it's there so that when you do need it, you know where to find it. Okay. The cool thing is that they've given you this little uh, bookmark for, for marking where you're, you're at. So a couple different things that you can do with this. You can just put this together and keep it with a paper clip or you have a little bulldog clip, binder clip, whatever. So you can easily navigate through the planner. This is an eight and a half by 11. So you can actually fit an entire letter sheet of paper inside. So you can actually keep all your notes and handouts inside the planner, which is different than other planners. And they have a bunch of these monthly calendars right up in the front. And there's so many different cool ways that you can use this. And I'll show you a couple of them right now. Uh, one of the things that I always endeavor to do is move more. And so if you like working out or you want to get better at that, that's one way you can use this monthly view. So in this example, I have highlighted the days that I have committed to going to the gym and highlighted a couple different focus areas for when I go to the gym. Notice that I just used like some simple pens to keep track of that. You don't need anything fancy. Um, I just have a couple felt tip pens that don't bleed through because this paper is a little thinner. You wanna use pens that aren't super inky and that will soak through. Another way that you could use it 
is to do some meal planning. If you wanna be thoughtful about what kinds of foods that you eat, um, one way that you can use the monthly view is to create a meal calendar. This is helpful for me, especially because I buy groceries and I wanna make sure that I'm not one, wasting food, and two, putting good food in my body. So you can do a couple things by, if I make zucchini pasta on this night, I know that I can have it for lunches on these days, which saves me money. And then I can also keep track of when I don't have meals accounted for. So I know that I'm gonna go out to eat here but it's one way to help me be a little more, more mindful about the food that I'm eating and what I'm spending on going out to eat so if you have some roommates or if you want to have some control over the food that you have and you're able to do that this is one way that you can use that monthly view. Um, sometimes, um, so I have, I manage some student workers and I will have them print out these and write down their major commitments and deadlines. So whether that is something that they're doing for their fraternity or sorority or um, the major deadlines they have at work or with school, I have them write them all down in one calendar. One of my students realized that he had like three or four midterms happening on the same week as one of the major events for his fraternity. And that meant that he needed to adjust some things in his life to make sure that he could plan around that. So using the monthly view allows you to see what things are coinciding around the same time. You get your syllabi, but when you overlap all of them together, you start to see in addition to the major commitments that you have in your life, where things are gonna get really busy for you so that you can plan ahead and work around it so that you do have time to to um, get things accomplished ahead of time and not get super stressed out about it. Being able to see all of that together is gonna to be really helpful. Another way that you can use the monthly view is tracking things. So if I broke it down along the side in an imaginary scale of one, two, three, four, five, for example, you can track some things like mood or pain, sleep, um, symptoms or whatever and, and just by drawing a dot and drawing the connecting lines. Um, sometimes this is helpful especially if you're managing like a chronic illness or you're trying to see how you're feeling on certain days and track those things um, to have a log of what has happened to refer back to. So sometimes it's helpful to record some symptoms of things so that you can be like oh wow I was really feeling that for a couple a couple days or I'm really only getting five hours of sleep a day. <laughs> so um, trying to, to capture some of that data so that you can make meaningful changes based on the numbers that you track. Another way to use the monthly view, see there's so many ideas, um, is to look at money. And for people who are trying to manage a budget and save some money or see what their monetary needs are, you can monitor and track some of your predicted expenses. So if you know you're gonna pay rent, if you know that you need groceries and have other bills that are fixed throughout the month, being able to see that on paper helps you then foresee some of the ways that you're gonna to need to manage your money and make a budget for the things that matter to you. So if it matters to you that you go out for friends' birthdays, then making sure that that's a part of your budget that month and then you can adjust your your spending for the week, you know, buying things before your next paycheck that that inhibit you from being able to spend that money on a friend's birthday. So being able to see that and plan for that allows you to be a little bit more thoughtful about where that money is going and how you're spending it. And then one of my last ideas, but certainly not least, is using this monthly grid to keep track of your gratitude. Because it's not just about what you do, but it's about how you're living your life and being grateful for some of the things that have happened. That every day, maybe there's something that uh, someone said that was really funny or that there was a moment that you were really appreciative and being able to log that down it's a nice keepsake to go back to that's another idea and then just kidding my real last idea is something that's a little more creative so for folks who aren't just writers but they're drawers and sketchers Every day, you can tell I'm not a sketcher, but you can use this as a, an opportunity to pause in, in the day and you know sketch something that really stood out to you and really capture something about your, your day. So what I say about the monthly things is that it, it's whatever is important to you, right? That's why I wrote down, ask you to write down your what, because whatever matters to you is going to be what's compelling about this planner. So trying to use it as a way of um, keeping track of your own goals and the things that you prioritize is going to be major in, in keeping the momentum and using this planner. And this is what the inside looks like. Personally, I use a different format. The horizontal thing is hard for me and I like to use vertical and um, some sections that would be helpful for me aren't necessarily built in. So this is what I mean by you're given a structure that other people think is helpful and that 
Sometimes we look at it and say, that's not going to work for me, and then you opt out. But there are ways that you can customize and change the structures that you've been given in order to make it work best for you. Even though this is the way it looks like, there are some tips that I'm going to share to personalize. Um, so right now, there's a lot of open space. There's some month at a glance. There's tips specific to the campus that I think are really helpful to have at your disposal. And then, you know, lines for all of your, your days of the week. Great. How can you customize it? Well, one option is to add some personal touch by, you know, maybe there's a quote that stands out to you and throw that in there. Um, and maybe you want a really quick glance at your schedule for the day and you just write that down on the side here. I use a Google Calendar, so all my stuff is online. Whenever someone asks me if I'm free, I pull up my phone and look at my app and tell you if I'm free or not. But it's helpful actually just to see a really quick and super general idea about how I'm spending my days. If I know that I have certain student group meetings or if I know that I have certain deadlines, it affects how I prioritize my tasks that week. So so maybe you just want a quick glance as to what's going on there and then have space on the side for, you know, all of your to-do items. Great. I also suggest if you like color, if you like adding a little bit of fun, I use some washi tape sometimes to break up the structure to add a little bit of my personal flair. And I get a variety of different washi tapes from, you know, Michaels or online at Amazon and little craft stores that, and they're usually on sale. It adds a little bit of a visual interest that keeps me interested in using the planner and I love color. You don't have to do that by any means. You can do it as simple or as ornate as you want, but just whatever motivates you to keep using it. Other ideas include infusing some of those things that I talked about earlier in the monthly into the weekly, because for me, out of sight, out of mind. I build in some of those things in here where I might include the, the meal planning here, the tasks here, and a gratitude at the bottom at the end of the day. Right, so if I infuse that into the rest of my week. Um, up here, I have a little habit tracker. If you want to build certain habits, remind yourself to do certain things. Like for example, here I have clean. Go to sleep at 11 o'clock. Have some kind of movement in my day. Then I can kind of go through and be like, oh, yep, on Monday, I definitely did that. Uh, definitely did not, did not, but I did go to sleep at 11 on Wednesday. And then you can find a way just to keep track and encourage yourself maybe to fill in the boxes and have a whole chart filled out. And I know that these tips are really useful, but there's a lot of really good real estate here. So um, if you have stickers or something, you can cover that up and then be able to jot down some notes or whatever sketches you want in the side here. Just get creative with that space. Okay. And of course, you don't have to buy special stickers. You can also just use Post-its and just cover that up. The bonus of that is that you get to move it from week to week. So whether that is a, an assignment that you're trying to work on throughout the semester, you know, you have components of the paper that you're trying to write here and building off of it um, throughout the semester, you can keep that going with you, which is really useful. As you can see, there's still so many different ways you can use this. You can wipe this out. You can start sketching in it instead. You can keep track of anything that matters to you in here just to make you feel like you're making progress on whatever goals you have and that's the cool thing about being in college is that you get to unfold who you are what your life is about over time and once you start realizing that you can like tweak the rules a little bit and tweak the structures to suit you better the whole world starts to open up and a lot of possibilities present themselves so I encourage you to do that and know that you are going to experiment with some stuff and try some things, not like some of them, like others. And it's all a grand experiment. And whatever happens, you have everything that you need in order to succeed. Just know that you got this. And more importantly, as you could see from the resources up front, we got you. So even if you don't know exactly where to go, know that there is a place to go, no matter what happens. I hope that you have a great year. I hope that you try some new things and learn a little bit more about yourself. Let me know if you have other ideas down below in the comments or other questions that you have. But otherwise, I hope that you enjoy it, like it, share it, whatever. But I'll see you in my next video. Bye.